All right, hello everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to the second webinar for Give Atlanta, the fundraising strategy webinar. My name is Lisa. I'm the Senior Community Engagement Manager here at Mighty Cause. And for today, we're going to be going over um, a couple of things um, in regards to Give Atlanta. We're first going to be going over some general challenge basics, and we'll also be breaking down the prize and bonus structure. We'll then jump into um, campaign strategies you can utilize uh, for to win all the different prizes and bonus challenges. We'll also be going over just some key important details to keep in mind as you start planning for Give Atlanta or as you start fundraising. And then at the end, we'll go through any questions and answers. There is a questions and answers tool on your Zoom panel. So feel free to utilize that, add your questions in there. And then at the end, we'll go through all of those questions. So let's first go over some Give Atlanta, ba At Atlanta basics for those who maybe have missed the first webinar that we had. So as you know, Give Atlanta is hosted by Atlanta Magazine. It starts October 19th at 12 p.m. and it ends November 9th at 12 p.m. And there's going to be weekly challenges and bonus prizes that we'll get into in a second. If you need information on any rules or prizes, you want to check out all of the resources we have, our FAQ, our toolkit, please head to giveatlanta.mightycause.com. You'll find all of the information about Give Atlanta there. For those of you who may have missed that first webinar we had where um, we broke down some of the tools and features on our platform, uh, all organizations, if you're set up as an administrator, you have an organization dashboard that you can utilize to manage your organization, review reports, update your page, etc. cetera. Um, if you have any questions about any of the tools on your dashboard, please feel free to reach out to support or even um, ask your question at the end of this webinar. Once you're logged in as an administrator, um, if you're a new nonprofit, you wanna make sure that you head to your organization page and fill out information about your organization. What do you wanna share with your donors this year? Uh, and if you're a returning organization, you wanna make sure that all of your information is updated so that um, it matches the content and the mission and goal that you're trying to share with your donors for this year's campaign. In addition to updating your organization page and the content on your organization page, you also want to review and update your checkout flow. So you want to make sure that your custom donation levels are updated, or if you need to change them, you do so. Also add um, custom descriptions if you need to do that. You also have the ability to add custom questions. So if you're new, you may want to add a custom question you want to ask a donor, or if you're returning, you want to make sure that you're asking the right question this year and as well making sure that your thank you page and your thank you message receipt is updated and has been added in. Once you start fundraising and receiving donations as administrators, you're going to receive email notifications when donations come through. And you can also review all of your donor data in your donations report. Um, that will provide you all of the information you need and the download tool on your donor report will download a CSV file where you can find even additional information. If you need to add offline donations, you can do so. Now offline donations will not count towards challenges or um, anything. So <clears throat> just keep that in mind when you add that. However, if you want to um, count them towards your metrics, you wanna just um, stay, keep updated on total donations that you've received on or offline, you're more than welcome to do so and add those offline donations. So after the challenge, um, you will receive your donations via, via our disbursement process. If you haven't set up EFT, we highly recommend you do so, and you will receive disbursements um, on the 25th for donations that were made from the 1st to the 15th, and um, on the 10th for donations made after the 16th. Um, and you will also be notified when we send out these disbursements. 
So now that we've gone through some of platform basics that you may have missed on the first webinar, we're also gonna be breaking down the prizes and bonuses so that you can better think of the strategy that you wanna to implement to win them. So uh, the Give Atlanta challenge is broken up into three bonus challenges and then an overall grand prize challenge. So the grand prize challenge will be awarded to the top three organizations with the most dollars raised uh, throughout the entire challenge period. So from October 19th at 12 p.m. to November 9th at 12 p.m. First place will win $8,000 plus ad space, three full page, four color ads in Atlanta Magazine. Second place will have $4,000 plus two full page, four color ads. And third place will win $2,000 plus three half page, four color ads in Atlanta Magazine. So there's a lot of prize money and also amazing ad space that your organization could potentially win. So in addition to the grand prize challenge, we also have three weekly challenges. So bonus challenge one will start and um, end on the first week of the challenge. And any nonprofit that raises $1,000 or more in the first week will be entered into a drawing to win a bonus prize. So in that first week, as long as your organization raises at minimum $1,000, we are going to pick um, a random organization within those eligible orgs and two of them will be selected to win $1,000. So that's honestly a really easy opportunity to win $1,000 for your organization just by raising $1,000 through the platform. Um, and again, that will end on Tuesday, October 26, right before noon at 11.59. Then starting at noon, and that second week is bonus challenge two, and that's gonna be the top four organizations that raise the most dollars. Uh, first place will be $1,000, as well as second place. Third place will be one half page four color ad. Fourth place will be one quarter page four color ad. And then bonus challenge three will take place on the third week of the challenge. And it's the top four organizations with the most unique donors. Um, and that will end when the challenge ends and the price structure is the same as bonus challenge two. So there's a lot of opportunity to win a prize during Give Atlanta. So you wanna start thinking about how are you gonna win? And we're gonna talk about that in just a second. So some challenge rules to keep in mind. For the grand prize challenge, an organization must have at least 10 unique donors to be eligible. So you can't have just one donor make one large donation and win the grand prize challenge. You're gonna have, need to have at least 10 unique donors um, to win that grand prize challenge. An organization cannot make a donation to its own campaign to secure a prize. So we had this question in the last webinar, just to clarify. So if yourself, an employee of your organization, a board member wants to make a donation to your organization, you are more than welcome to do so as long as it is your own personal funds. Um, you cannot use your organization's funds, your organization's credit card to make a donation to yourself, to your own organization. So if a donor, for example, uh, sends you a check and uh, you want to make a donation to yourself that represents that check, unfortunately, that is the, against the rules of this challenge. It has to be a personal donation. Only donations processed in the challenge window will be eligible, so it has to be made during the challenge time period. So you want to make sure that uh, you remind yourself that the challenge starts at noon and ends at noon, as well as the times that the bonus challenges end. Any attempts to abuse or mask email addresses to increase donation count will result in disqualification. So after the challenge, we will review um, the donations um, to ensure that um, the right organizations have, uh, you know, kept to the rules and has followed all the rules. Only the authorized cardholder can make a donation via the platform. So the donor must make a donation themselves. And this is just a PCI standard um, issue. So the donor has to make it themselves on the platform. You cannot take their information and do it for them. Uh, and as I mentioned, donations are reviewed and verified post event for authenticity. Um, if you have any other questions about the rules, 
We also have a official rules section on the challenge site where we break this all down and have more information about overall rules. All right, so let's get into the strategy portion of this webinar. So the first step into thinking about what you're going to be doing for your campaign is for setting a goal. So when you're thinking about your campaign, you want to make sure that you are creating a SMART goal. A SMART goal is a specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-based goal. Um, you want to make sure that you are setting up a goal that is realistic and achievable for your organization. But as mentioned in the SMART goal, it's still specific and measurable. And this will be really helpful and then figuring out what strategies you need to implement. So for example, a SMART goal can be retain 40% of donors from 2020 Give Atlanta campaign or increase your total amount raised by $5,000, right? That's a specific goal that might be really realistic for my organization. Um, it's more difficult to create a strategy when you have a broad goal like raise money or engage people because then it's hard to think about what exact things you need to do in order to reach that goal. So as I mentioned, you want to make sure that your goals are realistic and achievable based on your organization size and fundraising capacity. In the last slide, I just mentioned, you know, maybe one goal is to increase your donations by $5,000, your total raise. For one organization, that might be really difficult and unrealistic. So think about what is realistic for your organization. And it's really helpful to, if you've participated before or you've done fundraising previously, to look at your results from last year or from other fundraising efforts that you've done and think about what is an appropriate goal to have for this year. Um, and setting those goals, it's going to be really meaningful and impactful for your organization. But outside of monetary goals, you may want to consider setting up a non-monetary goal because non-monetary goals actually may make an equal or an even greater impact for your organization. So some examples of non-monetary goals that you may have. Maybe you want to this year engage with peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers, or maybe you have a lot of donors that donate via check and you want to migrate them over to be online donors. And your goal this year is to increase the number of online donations we have. Maybe it's securing your first matching grant or engaging your board of directors or increasing one-time gift size. These are all really goals that is going to help really make an impact for your nonprofit. And again, it's a non-monetary goal. It doesn't have to be something that's monetary, like let's raise five, ten thousand more dollars. And it's really helpful to have an overall goal for your challenge because then you can actually map out your campaign with many goals. And especially in a challenge like Give Atlanta where it's multi-week, that's actually so much more beneficial for your organization because then you can actually map out clear cut goals for each week of the challenge. And then you can share your goals with your donors and your followers. For example, maybe your overall goal is monetary goal, it's raising $10,000. Um, you can map out each week and say, hey, this week we've raised $1,000, we're so close to our goal. Or, oh, we've actually have 10 more unique donors than we had last year, our goal is 20, who can help us reach our, our goal? So that's why mapping out goals is really helpful because it can also be beneficial in your communication and how you're sharing with donors the impact they can make in your campaign. So one thing that sometime is um, underlooked a little bit for giving days is donor retention because donors who have given to your organization in the past are actually more likely to give again because there was a reason why they gave to your organization the first time they gave. So it's helpful to have a donor retention goal um, and to map that out as well. So we actually have a donor retention report that you can utilize. If you are a returning organization, I highly recommend that you check out the donor retention report on your dashboard. It's available in the reports section. Um, and you can actually keep track of who donated last year and who have you retained and who have you not retained. And you can then download a list of all of the donors that you haven't retained 
And that's an email segment right there. That's a segment of donors that you can reach out to and say, hey, you donated last year. This is our mission for this year. This is the impact you can make. Can you help support us again? Because it really helped us with X, Y, Z. So definitely if you've participated previously, uh, check out the donor retention report on your organization dashboard. If you are a brand new organization, if you have those stats, um, if you can see this year to date who you have it, who hasn't made another donation since last year, definitely recommend um, reviewing that because that could be a really great email list um, or um, segment list to reach out to. Okay, so some leaderboard strategy to think about. Um, leaderboards will be shown when the event starts, October 19th. So keep tabs of your position, because again, that's really helpful to share with donors where you stand, what's at stake, how much you need to get to your goals, um, and it's going to really build momentum um, and really motivate donors to participate, get involved, make a donation, etc. So some bonus challenge strategy. So for bonus challenge strategy, it's really helpful to pick your bonus that you really want to focus on. Maybe it's, you know that it'll be easier for you to um, get more unique donors than it is to um, win the total dollars raised. Um, so pick your bonus and commit to a plan to hit your audience um, the hardest during that time. Like which bonus time um, do you want to really um, send out your communication and really motivate your donors to make a donation? Um, ask major donor, donors to time their donations accordingly for the challenge that you think that you are most likely have the opportunity to win. Um, so you want to really think that through as to what do you have the best chances to win for Give Atlanta, there are so many chances that you have available, but you still want to think at it out of what do you think is going to make the biggest impact for you and share that information with your donors. All right, so now that we've talked about some leaderboard strategy, some goal setting, Let's get into some fundraising tools or fundraising strategies that you can utilize for your campaign now that you've set on um, the goal and the bonus challenge that you want to meet and win. So matching grants is one of the most common fundraising strategies that organization utilize, organizations utilize for giving challenges. Um, so matching grants are a really great way to motivate do donors to give immediately because they get to see that their donation is going to make an even larger impact. It's going to go even further than without a match. Um, so that is why matching grants is so impactful is that it really motivates donors to not only give, but also give a larger amount than maybe then they were expecting or planning to do so. So one of the benefits of a matching grant, as I mentioned, is that it generates a lot of interest. It acts as a buy one, get one deal to really inspire, motivate donors to also act fast. So that's why they're also a good bonus challenge strategy is because donors know, oh, only in this week, my donation counts double than what it would in on a different week. So it makes your um, dollars go even further. Um, it also helps with stewardship. Um, if you are looking to have supporters get involved in a different way, uh, this is a really great opportunity for someone to support your organization in a different way they, they have done before. Maybe um, instead of giving a larger donation, they'll be a match sponsor for your organization. So one of the, um, so anyone can really be a matching grant grantor for your organization. A matching grantor can be a board member or a trustee. So it can be, um, you know, someone on your board who wants to, uh, you know, engage with your organization this year a little bit more. Maybe it's your board members, they're pooling money together. That can be a sponsor. It can be a major donor. Um, so again, as I mentioned, maybe you have a major donor that you reach out to a lot. Um, and this is a different ask that you can ask them for this year. Hey, if you 
can sponsor a match that will make an even larger impact for our organization. If there are any local businesses or companies that you work with, this is also an opportunity for local businesses or companies to get their name out there. Uh, on our match tool, you have the ability to add a logo so they can advertise their business while also um, you know, sponsoring a match and um, helping support your organization. And as I mentioned also with board members pulling money together, it doesn't just have to be board members, it could be volunteer, it could be your staff, it could be um, maybe you know the company you work at, maybe they want to sponsor a match. Um, so there's a lot of different people who can sponsor a match. It doesn't have to be one type of person. There's a lot of, anyone can really sponsor a match. Yeah? So how do you go by securing a match? So first you want to prospect. So I just mentioned a list of people who could potentially be um, a match sponsor. So you want to prospect who realistically could be, you know, sponsor a match and provide a match for your organization. You then want to do one-on-one -on -one outreach to those prospects and let them know what is Give Atlanta? Why are you participating in it? Why would having a match really affect your organization? What are the bonuses that you could win um, because you could have a match during that time period? And then, as I mentioned, you want to Get, make your ask and let them know how much it's going to impact your organization. So once you've found your match sponsor, you've spoken to them about the type of match that they want to do, you can add your match to Mighty Cause by going to um, your dashboard, going to fundraising tools and matching grants. You can add details about your match there, add a logo if the sponsor, if your matching grant sponsor has a, a logo. You can also enter different match types. Um, the most common type of match is one-to-one. -one. So meaning if I give $5, that will be match $10. Um, that's the most common type of match on our platform. However, that doesn't mean that your match has to be set up that way. Um, if you want to match by unique donors, so maybe your your match your uh, match grantor and you have, um, you know, the agreement is that if you receive ten unique donors, then all of those donations will be matched by your grantor. That's the, a type of match that you can set up on the platform, and that we'll keep track of. So when you set up your match, you want to make sure that the start date that you're setting up for your match is the start date of when you want it to start. So if you want it to start at the beginning of the challenge, then you want to do October 19th at 12 p.m. If you want it to start and end during a specific bonus challenge time, you want to make sure that the start date and end date is matching the times of those challenges. So once you enter your match, you won't see it on your page until it's live. So until it, that start date that you've entered um, starts. So once it is live, there will be a button on your donation page and it will let donors know that there is a live matching grant on the site. Um, if donors want more information about, well, what is this match? How much do you have left of this match? Um, they can actually click that notification button and it takes them to a match tile, as you see in the image, where they can receive more information about that match and see, okay, they actually have $100 left of their match. I'm going to actually just help them and just fulfill it all. Um, so all of that information will be available at the bottom. If for some reason your match your match grantor doesn't want to be uh, have their name public, you can make it anonymous for them. Um, but that's how it will look on your organization dashboard. And as well on the Give Atlanta search, um, if you go to giveatlanta.mightycause.com um, slash search, uh, there is also a search fe feature that donors can utilize where they can see all of the organizations that have a matching grant at that time. So some matching grant um, frequent questions that we get. Does the matching grant have to be processed online? Um, so no, 
um, matching grants, uh, the grantor doesn't have to fulfill their donation online if they don't want to. However, for Give Atlanta, only online donations will count. So that's something you want to keep in mind. If you want that uh, match value to count towards prizes and leaderboards, then you do want your uh, grantor to make their donation online so that it does count. Do donations made to peer-to-peer -peer or fundraising pages count towards the match? Yes. Um, any, uh, that can be your choice. So when you're setting up the match, you can set it up to be that way. Um, but yeah, if you set it up that way, it can count towards any fundraising page that you have. Can I have more than one matching grant active at the same time? Yes, you can have as many matches as you want going on at the same time. If you also want to queue them, so you want to have one match after another, you can also set it up to be that way as well. Um, so the world is your oyster. You can do what um, you know you prefer to do. Oh no, I entered my matching grant wrong. What did I do? So when a match is active or it's upcoming, you can still edit most of the tools or most of the things on the match um, when it's live or before it's about to go live. Once it's closed, it is closed. You cannot edit it. You can't open it up again. So if for some reason you run into an issue with your match and it's closed, um, then you want to reach out to us and we can help um, fix the issue and figure out what we need to do to um, you know, have your match correct. Um, and one thing I do want to know about matching grantors paying their donation online. So if you do have a grantor that wants to make their donation online, you want to make sure that they are fulfilling their match when there is no live match happening. So what I mean by that is, let's say you have your match currently live, meaning any donations that come through, it's gonna be matched. Um, you wanna make sure that your grantor is not making their donation at that time or else it will count towards that grant. So you wanna make sure that the grantor is making their donation after the match has been fulfilled or it's been met or it's been closed. So once you've set up your match, you also want to make sure that you're letting your donors that you're going to have a match available. So you want to start promoting in your emails leading up to Give Atlanta. Hey, we're going to have a match. You're going to make a huge impact for our organization by donating because we have a match and you can double your impact. Use social media and share information, again, of sharing about all of the match and how much um, a donation will impact your organization and make sure that you're also sending donors emails when your match is actually scheduled or when it's actually live on the site so that they can go and immediately make a donation. Okay, so now that we've talked about matching grants, we're also going to be talking about another common fundraising strategy, which is peer to peer fundraising. So what is exactly peer-to-peer -peer fundraising? Well, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising is a technique where a nonprofit leverages existing supporters to bring in new supporters by asking them to create a fundraiser and ask their social network for donations. So it's asking your community, your board members, your donors, your volunteers to fundraise on behalf of your organization. So why would someone want to fundraise for your organization? Well, there's a lot of reasons why actually people would be interested or want to help support your organization. One, it helps with the stewarding process. As we mentioned with um, uh, matching grants, it's a non-monetary ask that you can ask donors or ask your um, support network. You know, you're not asking for a donation, you're asking someone to help fundraise for your organization. Um, it's also a different way for people to get involved, volunteer, have fun. It doesn't have to be something that's so really structured. It can be really fun. Um, I remember seeing a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising campaign where they had a crazy pants peer-to-peer uh, -peer fundraising challenge where people would 
uh, the people fundraising all had a crazy pair of pants. And at the end of it, they had a fashion show, a virtual fashion show to show everyone's crazy pants. Um, so it can be fun. It can be creative. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can get people involved with peer to peer fundraising. But also the reason why peer to peer fundraising is also um, you know, really effective is that it allows other people to tell the story of your organization and why they want to support your organization. Because the people that are fundraising, they're going to have their own dedicated page and they have the opportunity to share on their social media and on their page, this is why I'm fundraising for this organization and this is why a donation would make a really big impact. Um, So similar to um, matching grants, uh, who can be a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser? And that really can be anyone in your network. So it can be board members, it can be volunteers, it could be your staff. If you have a program, it could be program alumni, people who follow you on social media. Um, it really can be anybody um, that you want. Board members are probably a very common actually um, group of people that tend to do peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. It's a really easy way to get them engaged with your organization. Um, and it doesn't have to be a difficult process. You can make it really easy for them. We have peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tools where you can add a template. So it's really easy for them to create a fundraiser. Um, we also have a lot of support articles. So um, you can also provide them the resources so that it's a really easy and seamless um, process. Um, so as I mentioned, we do have a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising tool, and one of them is our team fundraising pages. Um, as you see in the image on the right-hand side, this is an example of a board fundraising team. Um, teams allow individuals to come together, but with a collective goal. So for this team, right, it's the board members, they're coming together to participate and um, have people donate to the Animal Humane Society, uh, but they all have their own individual page that they're um, asking donors to donate to. So this is really great for, in this example, board members or other groups of people like your staff or a volunteers. Um, you know, I've seen a group of uh, Boston pedicabbers who came together and wanted to fundraise on behalf of an organization or local community. Um, and team fundraising or group fundraising, it just generates more interest um, because it's a group effort and more people can share their page with their network of people, their family, their friends, their coworkers, their peers, etc. So uh, now that we've spoken about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, we're also going to be talking about some marketing promotion and tips that you can utilize for your Give Atlanta campaign. In the beginning of this webinar, we spoke a lot about your goals and um, what you're trying to convey to your donors and how to convey it. So you wanna think about what is your story for your Give Atlanta campaign? Um, so think um, for a few minutes about how would you explain to someone what your work means to you? What does your organization do? So you wanna make sure that the story that you're telling is not only personal, but that it's visual, that you have photos and videos to go with your story and that you have the ability to share your story on social media and that has a clear call to action. What do donors need to do to help um, make an impact or a help with the cause or the goal that you're sharing? So when it comes to email marketing for the challenge, you wanna make sure that your emails are short and sweet. So we actually have some email templates in our toolkit that you can utilize. And you wanna make sure that your emails have a strong call to action. Donate now, help us today. It's very clear for donors what they need to do or what they're being asked to do. Just a general rule of thumb, we always recommend to test your emails with your um, colleagues or with your family or friends, just so you know that what you're sending out, all of your links look great, everything is segmented correctly, and that everything is uh, mobile friendly um, so that it 
looks the same on a desktop as it does on your phone. But most importantly, you also want to make sure that you're segmenting your email list. So I would recommend writing down a list of groups of who you want to target for your Give Atlanta campaign. Maybe that's past donors, maybe that's volunteers or board members, um, or maybe it's large donors or donors that have been given to your organization in some time. Um, you want to think about all those groups of people that you want to reach out to and you want to segment and customize your emails to fit those donors and what you're asking them. As I mentioned also previously in this webinar, your donor retention report or your um, unretained donors is a great list of people to reach out to because as I mentioned, the people who have donated in the past are more likely to donate again. So plan on at least sending a couple of emails to those unretained donors and make sure that you use strong language like give again, we know we can count on you. Language where you are signifying you've helped our organization in the past and how you can make an impact again. And for those large donors, you wanna consider either writing a personal email or even giving them a call if you have their phone number to let them know that you're planning on participating in Give Atlanta. Maybe there's a bonus challenge that you're trying to reach for and how they can support you in that. In addition to email strategy, there's also a couple of key things for social media strategy that you wanna keep in mind. You wanna post where your audience is. So for some organizations, their donors, their network is not on Instagram. It's just on Facebook or on Twitter. And if that's the case, focus on the social media platforms where your audience is, especially if there's going to be a lot going on during that time of the year. So you want to make, you know, you want to be efficient as possible. Um, it's really helpful if you schedule ahead of time. So if you have, if you do have tools like Hootsuite or, um, you know, any social media, um, other um, social media uh, marketing tools that you can utilize um, so that as the challenge comes, you are prepared and ready. Um, if there's a bonus challenge that you're really focusing on, maybe you want to consider uh, making a boosted post during that time so that it reaches more people. And also think about the exact content you want for social media. For example, videos typically get shared more often on social media platforms. Facebook and Instagram will naturally actually um, share videos more often um, because that is the medium that they're trying to push on their platforms. So think about what engaging content you can provide um, for your donors. Make sure when you are um, posting on your social media that you're using the hashtag Give Atlanta um, so that you can engage in the overall conversation, see what other organizations are posting um, and be part of the Give Atlanta conversation. Um, if there's some, you know, people that are commenting or liking, uh, make sure that you're responsive to those individuals. Um, if you don't have the capacity to do that, or you feel like you won't have the capacity, consider appointing someone on your team or even looking for a volunteer that can help with social media during this time. That can be really helpful for you. Um, use sites like maybe um, volunteermatch.org um, to put out a posting that you're looking for a volunteer. Um, and you'd be surprised how many people are interested in helping out your organization. Um, and lastly, like I mentioned, stay in your comfort zone. So if there is a platform that you're not comfortable with, you don't have to utilize it. If you are not a TikTok person, you do not have to utilize TikTok. Use um, the social media platforms that you know your network is in. And you want, as I mentioned, you would just want to be as efficient as possible when it comes to um, this time of the year and all of your social media marketing. So for uh, general, just rule of thumb when it comes to like email marketing and social media, as I mentioned, videos are, um, will 
most likely be posted more or boosted more on those platforms. And for images, strong and striking images are important, but they do not need to be professional images. Um, sometimes organizations um, that ties them down from posting images, they don't have professional images, they don't have to be professional. Sometimes if it's an image you take of yourself of maybe, um, you know, a person in need that you've helped or um, an animal that you've helped if you're an animal organization, that can be equally strong, equally strong to a professional photo that, um, that someone may post. If you are looking for a professional photo, um, I recommend checking out unsplash.com. It's a site where you can reuse professional photos for free. Um, so you can download a professional photo and reshare that. Okay, so the last section when it comes to strategies, we're gonna be going over following up. This is one of the most important but also overlooked aspects of a fundraising challenge. Um, and that's following up with donors after your giving day has closed. Because uh, the faster you are to thank your donors, the more likely that they're going to give again or engage with your organization in the future. So you wanna make sure that you have a prompt and personal thank you we automatically will send them a thank you receipt and thank you message. But um, if you want to send your own personal thank you, especially to large donors, that really helps in the stewarding process and building long lasting relationships. So for those large donors or maybe specific donors that you want to reach out to, it's always best to reach out to them within 24 hours. Uh, if there are people, special people, maybe a matching um, grantor or a volunteer that supported you to give them a call and also get their feedback about your campaign. How did you hear about that campaign? What did you think of this? I um, mean, you know, what would you like to see next year? Um, and also, you know, if you do have the capacity to send a thank you card signed by your staff or executive director for those special donors that you really want to thank them for supporting you. Following up is actually really helpful uh, because it also allows you to um, share with your donors um, or close the loop on maybe some of the storytelling that you did throughout your campaign. Maybe for example, you're an animal organization and throughout your campaign, you've shared a story about a particular animal that you've helped rehabilitate. Um, a follow-up email after the challenge um, this could even be a couple weeks afterwards, um, you can share an update on the animal and how their donation made an impact on rehabilitating them or other animals that you help support. That's just an example of how that can be really helpful in closing the loop on a story that you're sharing throughout your campaign. After the event, it's also great to share on social media your results, any bonus challenges or prizes that you've won, um, and also emailing that to donors as well so that they can keep updated. Wow, my donation made an impact and they were able to actually win this much ad space, this much prize money. Um, and you can also even you know, tell them to look out for your organization in Atlanta Magazine if you've won ad space. Um, so it also provides you, um, especially with Give Atlanta being in the fall, it also provides you the ability to plant those seeds as to what your organization's planning on doing in 2022. So sharing, hey, this is our goals for 2022. This is how your money is going to make an impact. And this is what we're planning to do with it. Okay, so some key reminders about Give Atlanta. Again, it starts on October 19th at 12 p.m. and ends on Tuesday, November 9th. We have a list of resources available in our toolkit on giveatlanta.mightycause.com. How to's, this webinar will be added there as well, templates, etc. If you have any technical questions, please reach out to support at mightycause.com. We're more than happy to help with any technical questions that you have, um, please reach out to us and we are more than happy to help. So I wanna make sure that we help answer any questions anyone has. So I'm going to 
jump into the questions portion. All right. What qualifies as a unique donor in regards to the bonus prize slide? So we look at the name and the email address. So as long as it's um, a unique email address, we look at that as a unique donor. Again, we will look at donations afterwards to make sure everyone's abiding by this by these rules and not just adding, you know, random email addresses for it to count as a unique donor. But that's what our system will look at, which is the email address um, and the name as well. So that if you have two people with the same name, et cetera, you know, they can still be counted, but email address to answer your question. Are there any other questions that I could help answer for anyone? Okay, I don't see any other questions coming through. This webinar will be added to the toolkit. We'll also have the slide deck there if you wanna download it and send to um, any colleagues or any of your team members. Um, if you have any questions, please let us know if anything comes up after this webinar that you forgot to ask. We're here to help um, to make sure that you guys have a successful Give Atlanta campaign. Um, I hope this was a little bit helpful um, and thank you so much for joining. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Bye.